Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and today I have a wonderful Jewish delicacy soup for all of you today. Wonton soup. Now why do I say that's a Jewish delicacy soup? Because every Jewish person pretty much eats this stuff. Well, that's actually not true because this has pork in the wontons. Well, any non-kosher Jewish person eats it, or if they are kosher, they'll not eat it with pork. I'm just totally stumbling on myself now. Regardless, we're making wonton soup, and not only are we making wonton soup, but it's gonna be one of the best wonton soups ever, I promise you. Because too often you can order Chinese food takeout and get wonton soup, and it's gonna be bland and just taste like hot water with some like really gigantic overdone wontons in there with this much meat in there. We're talking like a pinhead of meat when it's just all this floppy wonton around that. We don't want that. We want a wonton that's gonna be stuffed full of meat, more meat, less wonton. That's how it should be in my opinion the perfect ratio there so guys let's get going and start rolling some wontons up because we're gonna make some of the most amazing wonton soup you've ever had with some of the most accessible ingredients you can find here we go all right let's start with some prep I'm gonna take one shallot chopped up very finely like this into tiny tiny little pieces because we're gonna add this to the pork mixture in a bit so we want this to be very very finely chopped all right moving on now I want to take a bunch of scallions and then chop them all up just like this into pieces about this size. Now I want to take about one third of these chopped scallions and separate it from the rest here. And I want to take that smaller one third bunch here and I want to add that to the shallots that I chopped and then leave the remaining two thirds for later on when we're going to add that to our soup. So just focus on this for now and then put it in the bowl with the shallots. And just before we add this smaller one third portion of scallions to our shallots, we want to first chop them up nice and finely just like we did our shallots just like that and now let's add these to our bowl of shallots and by the way I'm reserving my other two-thirds of scallions like I said and I am not chopping these up any smaller than I already did we're gonna keep them just like this and we'll return to these in a little bit and lastly let's take a shiitake mushrooms and then take about four large mushrooms from that three and a half ounce pack we're not gonna use the entire thing by the way remove the stems from them and then and then dice them up real small, just like we did our scallions and our shallot. And by the way, the shiitake mushrooms, if you absolutely hate mushrooms, are totally optional, by the way. You do not have to add them, but I think they add a great texture and a wonderful flavor to a wonton. So again, optional, but uh, I'm adding them in. And the main element to making our wonton filling is to use some ground pork. This stuff is actually cheap. I want to use a pound of it, and this is only about $2 worth, at least in the New York City area anyway. So I'm going to take the ground pork, and I'm going to add it to a mixing bowl. And by the way, if you are kosher, or if you don't really care for ground pork, you can use ground chicken or ground turkey instead. Right, put it in there just like so, with clean hands, as well as our finely chopped shiitake mushrooms, scallions, and shallot. And now I'm going to season it up with one tablespoon of low sodium soy sauce, or you can use regular if you want, but I prefer low sodium. Two tablespoons of Shaoqing cooking wine. This is a Chinese rice wine that you can find in practically any Asian market or some international aisles of supermarkets. Uh, if you can't find this anywhere, I'll link to it on Amazon where you can get it, or if you don't feel like doing that, you can even use some cooking sherry. I'm going to add two tablespoons, as well as two tablespoons of sesame oil. I'm gonna add a half a tablespoon of squeeze or minced ginger and a half a teaspoon of seasoned salt. And now take some clean hands and then really get in there and then mix everything up together really well. It's really very therapeutic to do this, by the way. I love it. It feels like you're a kid again, just, you know, experimenting with Play-Doh or some other weird stuff that you'd likely never squeeze together as an adult. Or maybe you would. Really go through it, really let it go through your fingers, and it's going to become this amazing, amazing mixture of ground pork and all of our wonderful seasonings combined. Our shallots, our scallions, our mushrooms, and all those delicious seasonings. And then after about one to two minutes of really getting your stress out on this meat, we're going to be all said and done. This looks perfect, guys. So now what we want to do is we want to take this wonton meat and turn them into wontons. And this next part is super fun. So to make our wontons, we need to use wonton wrappers. Now, now you can find this in many supermarkets, you really can, in pretty much the frozen section or even the refrigerated sections. Just ask the supermarkets if they carry it. If not, go to an Asian market and they'll certainly have it. These come with a ton of wonton wrappers in here, guys. Regardless, we want to make sure they're nice and thawed. We're going to make about 50 of these, all right? And we're going to show you how to make them. Actually, I have a special guest who's going to make our wontons for us. This guy, Richard! Hi, hey Richard. Hi. I'm a hell of a rapper. So Richard's going to be our ultimate wonton rapper, yo, and he's going to show you all how to do it. Okay, uh, let's do it. 
Okay, so this is our setup. We're gonna start with our stack of wonton wrappers. That's thawed in at room temperature. Thawed in at room temperature. Uh, we have our meat and we have some water to seal it. First thing I'm gonna do is wet the edges. The perimeter. The perimeter, get it good and wet so it'll seal. Um, and then I'm gonna put small meatball in here, about the size of a pinball. You can put it right here in the middle. You can kind of smush it down if you want to a little bit. We're gonna fold this over and make sure our wonton touches over the top of it and so the it makes sides. like a little rectangular pocket. So it should be a pocket. With the meat in the middle. With the meat in the middle, like this. And then you're just gonna turn it this way and pull it down like that. Just that easy. Perfect. And then you're gonna just put it inside of like a Tupperware bowl or a long dish and then it's gonna get all the wontons as you possibly can made. And don't worry, if you don't use them all right now, you can freeze them and you can use it for a later batch. Just get it out of the way and do it all now. So here's a little replay up close and personal. You get a wonton wrapper, you take some water from a little bowl and you put it water around the perimeter or the edges of the wonton wrapper. And by the way, use square wonton wrappers, not circular ones. It makes it much, much easier to fold and give it that shape we want. And then from there, we wanna take about a pinball sized lump of the wonton meat, some pork, and just put it right in the center. And then we want to fold so the bottom part of the wonton wrapper meets the top part of the wonton wrapper, just like that. And the water, the trick of the water is it uses like, it serves as a glue for this, so it's perfect. You press down so it's completely trapped in there, the meat, and then you just simply take it, do a little bit of a curve, and then bend it around the edges, and then guys, lo and behold, a wonton. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? Look at that, a beautiful, beautiful wonton. And you see that? Beautiful formation, exactly how we want it. And then we add it to the rest of our wontons right in here. And we're just gonna fill this up, like I said. And there we go, guys. We have 45 wontons we were able to make out of this. And by the way, it's a lot easier to do if you have one person rolling the meat and the other person assembling the wontons, because it'll avoid you having to get any of the meat on your fingers and then get it on the wontons at the same time. It makes it a lot easier and less messy that way. Well, somebody who handles the meat and somebody who handles the dough. You know what I'm saying? It's like working on 42nd Street that way. So, you know, pull up a chair, gossip about people, and have fun making wontons. And Richard, show off these beautiful babies you made. We, we didn't, it was great effort here. Like I said, team effort. I rolled the meat, Richard wrapped the wontons. You know, the roller and the wrapper right over here. <laughs> when we make our soup, we're gonna add in about half of the amount of wontons we made, and then we're gonna freeze the rest for later. It's perfect, you have a whole other batch. And it was really, you know, between the two of us, it took about 15 minutes to get all these babies wrapped up. It goes by relatively quickly once you have an assembly line going, but look at this, guys. Adorable, homemade wontons, and they're gonna be amazing. Aren't they? Yeah. Aren't they? They're better. <laughs> now, many people might be accustomed to wonton soups with little strands of pork inside the broth. I love that myself, but because we already have pork in our wontons, I also really like having some little strands of chicken instead, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take some chicken tenderloins, or chicken tenders, because, well, they're super tender, and they're gonna be easy Easy to cut into little strips. Perfect. You see how they're just tiny little pieces like this? That's all I want them to be, just like so. All right, so now let's make this broth. So now let's go to the Instant Pot and I'm gonna add in six cups of chicken broth. You can use regular or low sodium. And I wanna come out of my Instant Pot and hit the saute button and make sure I'm on the more or the high setting. Setting because we wanna bring everything to a boil right now. Start heating up our broth as we prepare everything else in our soup. It'll be make for the best way to cook the wontons. And now I'm gonna season our soup up with a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, not the same thing as garlic salt, by the way. One teaspoon of white granulated sugar. Two teaspoons of seasoned salt, and I use Lowry's for this. One teaspoon of turmeric, and this is going to give the broth that wonderful color that we all know and love for wonton soup. I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of this squeezed ginger. I'm gonna link where you can get this online. You can even get this in Costco or supermarkets, but I find that it's easier to use than other kinds of ginger. One tablespoon of it. It's a lot less messy to deal with as well. Now, if you wanted a little less gingery, add only a half a tablespoon, but it's gonna be totally perfect, in my opinion, for one, it won't be overbearing, it just gives it a nice hint of ginger flavor to it. But again, you can just reduce it to half or not add any at all if you absolutely hate ginger for whatever reason. But if that's the case, don't ever tell Fred Astaire or Julianne Moore, okay? Two more tablespoons of the Shaoqing cooking wine, two more tablespoons of low-sodium soy sauce, and a tablespoon of sesame oil. And let's give that all a good stir, and let's add our chicken into the pot. By the way, the chicken's also optional, but I really like having it in there. And then just give it a stir so it gets nice and dispersed. You see our chicken begins to get white almost immediately due to the heat of the soup, because that's, that's why I put it on saute. I wanted it to heat up a little bit. All right, now that we have our chicken in the soup, we now have to add in our wonton. Mm -mm -mm. I'm just gonna plop them in there one by one, and I'm putting about 20 of them in there. 
And there we go. And after we put our wontons inside of the soup, don't stir them around, just kind of give it a little press down so we're all good to go. We don't want to stir them because we don't, we don't want to unravel them or anything of that nature. And our final step here, guys, because I like some greens in my wonton soup, is to add in some spinach. I'm adding in about five ounces of baby spinach and just put it right on top of the broth just like that, no stirring, and presto, we're done. Now I wanna put the lid on top and we're gonna cook. All right, there we go, lid on top, secure it, make sure we're in sealing position. So now let's come back to our Instant Pot and hit the cancel or the keep warm cancel button. And we now wanna hit our pressure cook or manual button, depending on your model. And we wanna go, guys, on this for zero minutes. You got that right, zero minutes on high pressure. These are gonna cook super quickly, the wontons, and because they're so delicate, we don't want them to really fall apart. So we only wanna go for zero minutes Everything's gonna be cooked perfectly. The pork, the chicken, perfection. And any leftover wontons we might have, we're simply gonna put a lid on it and we can put it in the refrigerator if we want to for the next day, or you can freeze them. They'll last in the freezer for quite some time and when you're ready to cook them again, you can just heat them up in the soup frozen or let them thaw and cook in some soup, whatever you wanna do. But this is why I love this so much. You have so many wontons. All right, these are my leftovers. And don't worry guys, I didn't forget my remaining two thirds scallions I had left over. I'm gonna put these in at the very end when the lid comes off because I want them to have a little bit of a crunch still to it. The spinach is gonna create a nice soft green while this is gonna provide a nice crunchy one. And now that we're done cooking, we're gonna do a quick release. Now don't walk too far away from this, guys, when it's cooking. I'm telling you right now, it's gonna cook very, very quickly since we're on zero minutes, and we don't want those wontons to be overdone, all right? And quick release. And the pin just dropped, so let's take the lid off. And, well, there's our soup so far. And now let's give it all a stir in the pots. And there, there's our delicious wonton soup. Look at that, guys. Absolutely perfect. All right, now I want to add in the rest of my scallions. And then just simply give them a good stir in with everything else. And now, we are ready to serve this up. Let me add some wontons to my bowl. Look at how beautiful those are. As well as some broth in there. Some of the chicken and some greens in there, like some spinach. Maybe some more chicken. Mmm, I love that chicken. Maybe a couple more wontons, and look at how beautiful these wontons are, guys. Gorgeous. And I'll finish it off with a little bit more broth and some greens in there. And perfection. Wait, one more thing, actually. I love adding these crispy chow mein-style noodles to my wonton soup, because why not? They're amazing. And they add a terrific crunch. So there we have it, guys. Our gorgeous, amazing wonton soup, ready to serve. The soup broth color is exactly how we'd want it. The wontons are nice and substantial, exactly as I love it, just like this. And guys, get ready for one of the single best wonton soup experiences experiences of your life. All right guys, wonton soup. Here we go. Oh boy. Okay, well the broth tastes like the most flavorful wonton soup broth pretty much you can get anywhere because is there anything worse than getting a wonton soup where the broth is just bland and has no flavor whatsoever? No. No, there are very few things that are worse than that. This one, not gonna disappoint you, I guarantee you. And now guys, let's go for one of these beautiful wontons. Look at this, a gorgeous wonton, here we go. Blowing on it cools it down instantly, by the way. These are legit wontons. Mm. Completely legit. Now, the dough is gonna wanna fall apart a little bit on you, and that's fine. I mean, we did pressure cook this wonton soup. You don't have to pressure cook it either. You can simply boil the broth, dump them in, and then just keep an eye on them when you feel like they're ready and do it that way. So if you do it in your Instant Pot, your wonton skin is probably gonna be a little thinner and it's gonna be even more delicate than if you just boil it on the stove. But if you're gonna put it on your stove, you can just boil it for four minutes, and it's as simple as that. And if you wanna boil it for about four minutes on the stove, your wontons might be more substantial, so that's just a way for you to do it there. But in the Instant Pot, you don't have to deal with the heat or anything of that nature. I love it in the Instant Pot or on the stove either way, but here, options for you. But, you know, it's a hot summer. I don't feel like really doing that on my stove right now. And this suits me perfectly fine. Mmm, here we go again. This is, honest to Betsy, one of the best wonton soups I have ever had. And this is coming from a Jewish boy from Long Island who's had Chinese food every single Sunday. I wouldn't change a single thing to this soup. Everything in there is perfect. The seasoning for the pork wontons themselves is absolutely perfect and spot on. The seasoning for the broth, you couldn't ask for better. Mmm. This is wonton soup 
at its finest. It's gonna be perfect any time of year, whether the weather is warm out or freezing out. You can't go wrong with some amazing wonton soup, especially when it's homemade. When you try this, you're gonna be so pleased with yourself, it's gonna be crazy. I also love the chicken that's also in the broth. It's really a really nice touch. If you wanna have strands of pork in there, put strands of pork, but again, we already have pork in the filling of the wonton, so you know, have some chicken. Mm. This right here is a winning wonton wow. Guys, if you enjoy these recipes, go to PressureLowCooking.com because I have a ton of them. And you can pin any recipe to any board you want. And what's more, every single recipe has a video to go along with it, so you can't go wrong. Go to Facebook.com slash PressureLowCooking and like that page for all new updates whenever a new recipe comes out. Uh, for any tips, any humor, I'll be sure to keep you all up to date there. And of course, at PressureLock to subscribe to me on YouTube for all my videos, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. This is a wonton wonder. And now if you excuse me, I have to deliver an entire vat of this soup to every Stein, Shapiro, Goldstein, and Eisner on Long Island. Happy, happy cooking. <laughs>